the problem with this skin is the approach it's also high yield I'm not sure how many you will get but it's the questions are difficult uh, because why because you know how many diseases in the skin that you need to know guys around around maybe more than 30 diseases you need to know but the uh, but the good thing is each disease you just need to know maybe two or three lines that's why you will get confused there is no one big one I mean really no big disease like maybe psoriasis is a kind of big but not big enough uh, but there is yeah because you don't have really and you don't have categories so why the skin is problems because you know the questions I'm telling you something in the medical box which is usually our box which we respect it but it's okay but not always good for the test the box box classified the skin according to pathology so he classified according maybe to infections and then inflammatory and then maybe drugs and then you know maybe autoimmune disease or whatever in the test he will not use this classification in the test he will classify his skin according to what clinical so he will classify it according to scaly lesions for example papules for example whether it's acute or chronic maybe and uh, pigmented category blister category physical category and usually when we are studying the skin because we studied the skin without pictures usually or even with just we usually look to the picture of one or two disease then we get tired maybe maybe we look yeah maybe yeah, we got that and maybe even when we look at the picture then we'll forget it so basically we don't we don't know these terms that's why we got lost we know how to approach it as in medical box in general there is infection which is fungal bacterial there is inflammatory there is autoimmune which is vitiligo but the questions is not the category the questions first he will start with clinical aspect then maybe he will ask you the category maybe not yeah because it's not a step one i don't think he will ask you the category but he will ask you straightforward the diagnosis usually that's why it's a kind of hard so we studied like this and then the questions will be like this so we have to study i think this is our start to study the skin so we will go with the clinical first you have to make sure guys you know all the clinical features for all the skin hey hey sorry this is wrong. You just need to know one clin one one specific features for each disease. One is specific for each disease. That's why we are here. So once you will know one is specific, maybe with the duration, maybe with female and male, you then you will get the diagnosis. And usually the questions about maybe diagnosis or just initial treatment. So let's get started. Let's leave that. That's it, why I put it here to make the paper crazy. Let's make a big diagram, and after this big diagram, we'll take a break. And you will help me. Sorry, someone want to say something? Dermatology. Now, scaly. Yeah, I will divide it into clinical, by the way. I tried yesterday to make the clinical into another subcategory, but so far I couldn't make it. So I will make it just into categories, which is, I mean, into clinical. Scaly lesion, you have one, you have top differential. Two, pruritus categories. Three, erythema. Four, pigmentate, pigmentation, and I think five, vesicle, and lastly, blisters. Okay, lastly, blisters. Now, so you have these one, two, three, four, five, six, usually. Papules, nodules, uh, these are usually mixed. Papules, nodules, whatever, these are usually mixed. Guys, these are for whole dermatology except the cancer. Why? Because you don't have problem to diagnose cancers. Cancers, the questions are easy. Basal, sequamous, uh, are really easy to make it. 
So I uh, will talk about cancer by the end, which is very easy. But let's talk about this difficult stuff. So scaly lesion. What is the biggest scaly lesion in dermatology? The big one, a big disease. Scaly psoriasis, right? And psoriasis scaly lesions is a plaque formation. So you can say scaly plaque formation, which is very big. Psoriasis, what else? Anyone remember any other disease that is scaly? Very good. Actinic keratosis is also scaly. What else? I'll talk about these guys in details. Okay, there is also another one, seporic dermatitis. Although it's a scale, it's small scale lesions, but we can put it also here. Seporic dermatitis. Also scary scaly lesions. There is a disease that starts as a scaly and usually the name Christmas tree distribution. So it starts as a scaly but then erythema. What is this disease? Christmas tree features. Right, which is herald patch. So basically we are talking about psoriasis. Right, rosacea or whatever. Psoriasis rosea. So this is this is just a start. In triasis rosy, it start as a scaly, not the end. Start as a scaly and then end with erythema. So these are the big I what I get yesterday. I think these are maybe you will find one when we are talking. But so far you get these scaly lesions. Each one of them you have to know the picture, how how presented. So this will be the second topic. Pruritus. Bigger pruritus. I need the first one, pruritus is skin a problem. Is eczema usually not non prorotic? Oh, eczema? Oh, eczema is a pruritus, sorry. Eczema is a pruritus. But what else which is worse than eczema? Scabies, the first one. Scabies is the first one. Yeah, yeah, you are right. But I mean, in dermatology, dermatological disease, that present as severe pruritus is scabies. All right, so put the scabies is number one. Then maybe you'll go with urticaria. Someone said eczema, which is kind of hypersensitivity reactions, and then maybe the bug stuff, body lice, bed bug. You have more, but. I don't want to mention all of them here. I put some of them in the blisters. So I mentioned maybe the tops, scabies, urticaria, eczema, body lice, bit back. Erythema. When I talk about erythema, usually it's two types. Either just erythema. Which is basically you have erythema nodosum. Steven Johnson, so you can say erythema, also two subtypes, you have here acne and rosacea, and basically on the right left side you have erythema nodosum and Steven Johnson syndrome, EN erythema nodosum guys, Steven Johnson syndrome which is erythema multiformis, acne also erythema tasrash. Rosacea erythema rash. So both of them erythema rash. Pigmentation you have two types. This pigment. What? Erythema multiformis. Yes. It's here. Steven Johnson syndrome. It's the same as erythema multiformis. You can put it. Yeah, you can put it between the brackets. Steven Johnson syndrome is the same as erythema multiformis. Now, too much pigmentation. Or, too low or low pigmentation. Now, low pigmentation, which is basically, okay, let's make it hypo and hypo. Hypo and hyper. Now, hypo pigmentation, also two categories. If really, really decreased, I mean, or you can say complete or incomplete. 
Now, complete hypopigmentation. Give me the answer. You know the complete one. Vitiligo. Yeah, I like vitiligo first. Maybe leprosy second. Incomplete. Scar or tinea versicolor. So versicolor is also hypopigmented, but incomplete in compared to vitiligo. I mean, vitiligo will be really severe. I mean, all minanocyte gone. While for versicolor part maybe of minocytes still here, no, all the part is not there. And the scar is because it's it's a secondary problem. So already there is skin, already there is. I mean, there, the skin was normal, but because the scar injured the the, the new melanocyte. Hyper. You have only two. The first one, seporic keratosis, which present as a block, and the second one, acanthosis nigrans. Vesicles, you have two. If there is dermatological distribution, herpes zoster virus. So this virus goes with dermatomal distribution. If it is non-dermatomal distribution, what is your top differential? Both of them present as lying, guys. So both of them the same presentation. But if you will see dermatomal distribution, you will go with herpes zoster virus, which is shingle. Now, non-dermatomal distribution, what would be your answer? Which is very high yield. Uh, no. 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 Dermatitis. Oh, that's interesting, by the way. I didn't mention. I usually mention dermatitis epitomis here. Because of pruritus. But she's right. What else? Dermatitis herpetiformis, we can put it here by the way. Uh, contact dermatitis, guys. Contact dermatitis have the same problem. Usually, citric, just citric kind of vesicles in the beginning with erythematous rash, but then you know, in contact dermatitis, there is history of contact to the plant. Right, which is or 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 nickel in case of the if it is around the finger. So contact here. Contact is the main differential with herpes zoster virus. Now, lastly, Plister's disease. You can make into mild or severe, or you can just put it, everything together. And Pitaiko is a Plister's disease. Steven Johnson syndrome is a blister disease, and the last two, which is big category or big topic, not so big, but I mean very interesting. You have two bullous disease, which is pemphigus, right, and pemphigoid. Right, pemphigus, vulgaris, and bullous pemphigoid. So this is almost, maybe I forget some, which is I think drug allergy, maybe you can put it in a pruritus, food allergy, yeah, maybe I still forget some other categories, but I think with this, with this one you will get, I mean you will get the main. And for each one of them there is one interesting clinical, one interesting treatment even, one interesting maybe diagnostic sign. And then we'll talk about that. So that's why it's hard, guys. Why? Because again, look, even when I put it in categories, I couldn't make subcategories because this is crazy. I mean, pruritus, scabies, urticaria, eczema, but it's crazy. I, I hate this, by the way. Six or seven diseases are the same category. This is not healthy to study. But I don't know. I don't know how to make it yesterday because I can make it in infection, inflammatory, but I don't know how to make it. So when you'll see long list in general, in general, when you'll see a long list, that means that mean this list is not, not healthy to memorize it. That's why I always like to make it into subcategory, which is like this, complete, incomplete. Erythema, like this, acne, whatever. I mean, this is very, I think this is very interesting. But this pruritus category, and even scaly categories, you can maybe subdivide into clinical, who is black, who is pruritus, what will be confused. Yeah, sorry, by the way, in the erythema, 
there is one interesting topic which is this mild erythema so this mild not erythema this mild redness which is hemangioma and I put hemangioma and erythema because the same color and hemangioma you have two differentials it is young or older or infant so you can say one for infant one for young one for old infant you know the will be strawberry young will be either spider or cavernous old will be cherry okay we'll talk about this Yeah, I didn't mention I didn't mention the cancer here because I said the cancer is easy to make it. These are just non-cancer categories. Maybe you can put it in pigmentation, which is hyperpigmentation, but I didn't even put it there. But sure, malignant. So I didn't put basal cell, sequimus, keratoconcoma, and malignant melanoma because I think these are easy to make it in the test clinical wise. The problem always with the non-clinical. I mean with the non-malignant questions, not with malignant questions. So I will talk about malignancy separate. Any other questions, guys? I know, maybe you didn't get these, but we'll get it now when we'll go further. Let's make a break, five minutes. All right. 